Hello, welcome back to Deeper Conversations with me, your host, Matthew Silvers. Today, I have two very special guests with me. I have uh, returning my high school uh, best friend, uh, Irina. You know her from my um, two-part communication <laughs> podcast. If you haven't listened to that podcast yet, please go listen to it. It's literally my favorite. We talked for two hours and pretty much synced up, and it was crazy. Um, the other guest we have today is my sister, um, Faith. And I brought her in today just because we kind of are a trio from blast from the past. So, and we're talking about something fun today. We decided, <laughs> Irina and I decided that we're good at communicating. We want to teach you more things about communicating through other uh, areas of life. And so we decided to sort of kind of make it a little bit of a series, kind of as a podcast, um, kind of going through a little bit of stages of kind of different things. Um, we might do one on friends. We definitely want to do stuff on sex <laughs> um, for shizzles. Um, but today we're talking about getting and going on a first date. Um, so I'm very excited. <laughs> How are you guys feeling tonight? You know, good. Yeah. Good, good. <laughs> okay. Um, let's just start because I know, Irina, you said you had a particular first date story in mind that you yeah. wanted to tell. So we're going to start with that and then we're going to kind of go straight into how to get a first date and then kind of yeah. how to go on said first date. So, Irina, take it away. Okay. So I, I had this really bad date in college um and it wasn't my first date but I it was actually set up by a friend um and ironically I told the friend I did not want to be set up but he didn't listen <laughs> he set me up anyway and he's like oh too bad like I already told him I already promised him that you would go on the date and I was like I really told you not to do that for me and he was like well what's the harm of going on one date and I was like fine I'll just like go on one date with him he ended up taking me to the dining hall of <laughs> college. So romantic. Dude, that's so romantic, you know? Red, red flag number two. <laughs> exactly. Um, again, let me remind you, I was not interested in the first place. Um, but I was like, you know what? Why not? You know, because- No harm, no foul. Exactly. What are you going to do? Um, so we went on that first date. Um, and uh, I got my food and I sat down with him and oh my God, it was, holy, I felt like I was talking to a brick wall. <laughs> it's so bad, but I felt like I was talking to a brick wall because I ended up, it felt like a one person conversation because I would ask him questions and he'd give me one word answers. And I'm like, great, I just love this. Just love being on a date with a guy who doesn't even seem interested in dating with me. But according to his friend, then he was like very interested in dating me. Um, and I guess maybe he was nervous or something, but either way, like the fact that he would give me one word answers and just like, it was me asking all the questions and like really trying to get to know him. And like, he wasn't even looking at me. Like, I was like, what the fuck? Like, what is actually going on here? Um, and finally, finally, I turned around because he wasn't looking at me. And I was just like, what the fuck is he looking at? And I realized when I turned around that he was looking at a TV screen of a baseball game. And I was like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, you know what? Have a good rest of your day. And I got up and I walked away <laughs> because I'm like, I, what, like, I'm like, wow, okay, thank you so much. God, I, re I see where your priorities lie here. I mean, good for you for uh, walking away and knowing your self-worth. Yeah, but it's like, it's ridiculous because this, like my friend made it like very, like he made it seem like this guy really wanted to date me. And this guy finally got interested in me and kept texting me. And he was only interested in me, like he only showed his interest in text. And like, I get he was nervous, but like, at that, like, I'm not, I don't want to, I don't want to like date a guy or like, you know, go on a date with a guy who only is interested in me when it comes to text. Like, you know, I don't want to be ignored on the actual date. Right. 
accurate. Um, <laughs> I've already told the craziest first date story I've had. So if you haven't listened to episode one of this podcast, go listen. It's literally crazy. I love right? that story. <laughs> uh, it's insane. Um, um, but let me reiterate what Irina and I said in our podcast before. Um, if you are on a dating app and you are, um, even if you get someone's number from a bar and you're like, we should go on a date, the, the amount of time taken from the conversation you have from um, the dating apps and, or text message should be, uh, I said seven, I think you said 10 days. Or did we each say, did I we agree a on a week? week? A Which week. is seven days, yeah. So yeah, so a week tops, if there's no other further conversation beyond that, uh, you should be unmatching, you should stop talking, you should whatever, if it doesn't pique your interest and you're and not- And might I add, sorry, might I add that like a week tops for the first few days you're talking, but I feel like after that, no, a week tops for a date, to set up a date. Yes. But if you're talking, it should be no more- than a day T- talking no more than 24 hours like for a person to respond back it should be no more than 24 hours because if they're interested in you they're not going to waste time right and and if they're interested in you you know that's going to show uh through their communication um, Exactly. Yeah. they're going to say it and if they're not going to say it and uh you want to say it then say it one of you guys should be expressing what you want um and of course we discussed about being truthful as well never uh for any guy and any girl never say something for them the other person this is never, about yeah. being truthful Do it for yourself always for yourself and being understanding um so so step one about getting a date is a week tops and then figure it out um which i want to talk about um the best and worst first date ideas um so i clearly don't take a girl or a guy to the dining hall at a college yeah don't, seven don't one that. if it includes cafeteria anything uh, <laughs> it shouldn't be that's a bad a, idea yeah, Just... it shouldn't be a date um i think in terms of best worst date ideas i have been on a plethora um and I've been on some best and worst dates that weren't first dates. Um, I've been to Disney World as a date a couple of times. A, I'd love to hear that story, actually. I've had a couple. Um, there was, yeah, I made, if anybody doesn't know, I worked at Disney World. I worked at the Honda Mansion. And there were like two or three guys that I, listen, I didn't take them. It's just a ride that you go on every time you're there. So I went and I made out with like all three of them on the ride. Obviously different times, but um, <laughs> three of them all, the same, all on the same time. day. I made out hard. There's, um, this was the first time I had ever stepped onto Tom Sawyer's Island, which is like right in the middle of like Magic Kingdom. And I made out with this man in every inch of that fucking island. Like we didn't stop kissing and it, like we would find like little, little hidden areas just to like go and fucking make out. And honestly, like talk about public stuff, you know, it might've gone further if uh, we both hadn't chilled. Um, shout out to Kyle the custodian. Um, anyways. Um, so best and worst date ideas. I think, um, I think classic best date ideas, uh, a walk in the park, a picnic in the park, always a great idea. Yeah, um, always. dinner's a great, okay. If you're going to do movie, I think it's a great idea. However, two things about that. If it's going to be a movie, you have to do something prior and it has to be elongated. You have to have a good long conversation prior. So that's why dinner in a movie is- Or after, it. or after. No, you have to do it before because expectations are going to, you're gonna be expecting something in that movie theater if it, there's not a prior conversation prior. That's why I suggest not, not going to a movie theater before. And, and here's, here's and that's well see I don't see and I don't sometimes movie theaters are a bad idea if you want to take things slow and that's that should be my preface yeah. if you okay, want to yeah. take things slow yeah. do not go to a movie theater first wait what 
you are going no, to sorry, if you touch take them. Them, you are there is quality contact, there is quality um surroundings, um, which is that part might be good, you know, you get to see how they react in a the movie theater. But and and that's the thing is you also it takes meticulous work to go to a movie. You have to pick something. I wish I was joking, you have to pick something that both of you are probably not interested in. Uh, hold on, can I can I just cut in? Please, here for- I mean, hell yeah. I I mean, I haven't been on movie theater dates, but I've been on movie theater adventures with guys that are into me. But I I made it clear that like I'm not into them, but they still took me out to see movies. Um, and here's what where I'll step in and say that you don't necessarily have to do something prior, but. If you are going to go on a movie date, there has to be something before or after that you do. And here's why. Because when you go to a movie theater, there's no conversation. You're a stranger to somebody watching a movie. Awkward tension. And you're watching a movie. Like, I mean, that's like a scapegoat. Like, that's a scapegoat out of, like, Mm -hmm. any potential, like, actual tension. Yeah. So, So for you to actually have connection with a person, you have to do something prior or after the movie theater, you know, like after you do that kind of sort but of thing. But I want to I piggy, oh, go ahead. Well, but w- what I'm saying is like, I don't necessarily think you have to absolutely do something prior because if you want to start off slow and if you're really nervous, a movie may be the perfect thing for you to go to because you can hold hands and you can ease It is a great thing. place from our, from our communication episode if you really want to get past not saying yes to something and having your social anxiety creep in go to a movie say yes to a movie because you're gonna have physical contact at a movie i went to so i'll tell two fast stories there was one i think it was a second date but i went to a movie theater and there were like bed like seats and let me tell you what there was a blanket involved it was a it was um a bedtime or bedtime it was like a bed seat setting in a movie theater and we watched the movie it was a terrible listen it was ma with octavia spencer and i love octavia spencer but it was a weird ass movie to go see um but also like it just was i don't know it was just strange it was weird and then here's what i'll say and i and i want to continue about the best worst date and i want to get more um what do we think is too listen if you vibe you vibe and your connection stays and if you stay for long you stay for long what is too long for a date that's like you may or may not want to go on a second date so so i need a little bit more clarification i'm thinking two to three hours because i went on a first date to a drive-in or at least i thought it was a first date um, that's still kind of up in the air for what the fuck it was, but we went to the drive-in and we spent seven hours together. I spent seven hours together with a stranger watching two movies in his car. <laughs> and so it was interesting to say the least. I'm sorry. I think it was longer than that. Cause it was three movies. We ended up watching three movies. Um, but it was weird, but I say that. So, you know what? Let's get to timing after. But okay, what are some other best and worst date ideas? What, so what I will, before before we completely cut off of that, um, I think it's important to say that because it's interesting that you said something about the fact that oftentimes like it ends up a movie you're both hating. But I feel like if both parties are completely honest and like maybe one party is really against comedies. Let's say one party is super against comedies and you're not into romantic, like romance or you're not into like action, you know? But I feel like if you really want the date to work, like you want, you will guys, like you will find a middle ground, you know? Yeah. Cause that, I've, I've never like watched a movie that I absolutely did not like with a, with a guy that I not necessarily went on a date with, but hung out with, you know? Yeah. 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 So the anyway, the situation, if you don't want things to be super complicated, probably don't go to a movie. 
Um, yeah, but the one thing I will say is, Matthew, I think you know who this guy is. Oh, uh-huh. But I went to mm-hmm. his apartment yeah. last night, uh-huh. and we watched Thunder Force. Have you seen that movie? Best so movie. Much- Such a good I movie. Saw before I like he's like, what else are you into besides horror? Because he's like, I know you're obsessed with horror. And I'm like, yeah, I love that horror. Dick? Is there anything else you're like super into? And I'm like, comedies. And he's like, great. And we like look and he act We froze. Whoa, 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 whoa. Thunder. Faith, have you seen it? I have not. <laughs> I, I love Melissa McCarthy. Oh my god, she's she like she's one of my favorite actresses. And oh we watched it. I mean, like it it, it was good. like so. That's the thing. Like I feel like it may. It's a hard thing to. It's a hard thing to figure out though. Like when you do go to the movies or when you do decide on a movie, it is a hard thing to figure out because especially if you're like the person you're trying to hang out with is not necessarily into the same movies you are it can be tricky i do want to say this because i I want to get back on topic but uh, yeah sorry i I feel like you're fine no you're fine movies are a very we should just call it out as it is uh movies in a movie theater they're different you're right they're so different well no 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 they are different but in the same genre movies at somebody's apartment home whatever versus movies in a movie theater no matter what both of those settings are very intimate so you have to be weary you have to you are allowed to set boundaries for a first date um you should always set boundaries yes to make make sure you feel comfortable right um and we'll get to backup plans but let's let's get back so best and worst date ideas um, worse, don't take someone to a theme park on a first date. Get, it should be somewhere where there's, it's public, but not super public. Yeah, not like overwhelming. Knows. Like a theme park is too over, or yes. like just a carnival, like car, any carnival, like theme park thing, don't do it. Yeah. Just, and there are I some mean, people. Like, maybe it will be a cute date. Like that's, I, I mean, we're saying this like just because like usually when most people want to go on a first date, they want it to be more intimate and they want it to be more like where you can have a yes. conversation. It's not, it, it doesn't go to say for everybody because there are some people who are very into theme parks and like their first date at a theme park will be amazing. But like for me, that's not. Yeah. And, 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 but like, know? let's, let's put the social anxiety aside because, um, some people, you know, it's it's hard really to pick a date that doesn't involve food. I mean, it's possible, but the, you know, food's going to be involved. I know that there are quite a few people out it there. It usually is, though. Yeah, but there are quite a few people out there that get scared of eating in front of someone on a first date. You have that to. True. True, but you have to get over that. If yeah. not now, there. If it's not the first date you're eating food on, it's gonna be the second or the third. But it's gonna be one of your first dates. You're gonna go out for food, so you're gonna have to get over it. I read an article where this guy went on dates and he was worried about this happen? eating oh. food. What? You <laughs> what? You froze on both of our ends, and Faith and I were laughing for the past few minutes. Oh, I mean, you guys froze for me. I just, <laughs> um, but so I read an article about a guy who went to go eat on a, like a couple of first dates and he was worried. Guess what he did? He decided that he was going to sit next to the person instead of across from them and literally like avoided eating like completely in front of them. And it's just, just, you have to get out of that headspace. You're gonna yeah. have to get there. If it, this is gonna continue on, you might as well get over it. Yeah, um, you don't have to get the sloppiest food. I'm not telling you to go get fucking spaghetti on your first day. You don't <laughs> exactly. need to, you don't need to go to Maggiano's or Olive Garden or a New York City authentic Italian restaurant where you're getting this giant plate of spaghetti. Um, so yeah, and that's a bound yeah. Simple. Right. But regardless, like that that is one something that's something you will have to get over, like eating in front of the person. Like to to be completely honest, nobody fucking cares. I'm sorry, but like nobody fucking cares what you look like when you eat in front of them. Yeah. They they are there specifically because they want to meet you and they want to talk to you. Yeah. I'm sorry. If, if you're slurping up spaghetti, like they don't 
fucking care. Right. Yeah. And I think we should probably preface this by saying this is not a conversation about like eating disorders. If an eating disorder is causing you not to be able to eat in front of anybody, that's a whole other ballpark yeah. that we're not getting into because right. none yeah, that's of a us have yeah. so much of if a you, If you have an eating disorder, um, I can't really, sp- I didn't have one and I can't really speak about it. So if you have an eating disorder, obviously don't take, <laughs> Don't take the advice of us um, quite yet. If you have an eating disorder and you're open and you want to talk about it, um, feel free to contact me on Instagram. Yeah. Um, and, and I've actually had a few friends that have had eating disorders. Yeah. In the comments of the YouTube, you can come in if you're confident well. enough um, and want to come in and kind of let us know about what you guys think about um, first dates and things like that um, yeah. for sure. Um, okay, let's see. What are other best and worst dates? Um, again, cooking is a great idea. Um, avoid. Maybe not on the first. Like cooking is a great idea, but oh, because it's too intimate. You're right. It's too, the one. No, I, I'm saying it's a good. It's a good idea, but for you a first date. Keep in mind that like, for most women, they are terrified yes. to meet yep. somebody. Right. on the first date at their home right it should be we should like we said it shouldn't be overwhelming but it shouldn't be alone um and intimate quite yet so first date we're talking um walks in the park picnics in the park dinner and yeah. dinner um maybe dinner and a movie if you want to push it um carnival uh, i mean if you're surrounded by carnivals could be a really fun idea um, that's not as crowded as in me at amusement parks and that's super fun super chill to do yeah. um let's see what else maybe coffee bike, date bike rides what'd you say coffee date yeah coffee. that's a good one because that's um, like that's something there's i will say with coffee dates there's no commitment if something goes wrong you can easily just be like oh i actually have right no, and we're gonna get to the, we're gonna get to that as well um worst date worst first dates don't go to someone's house on their first date. Um, unless you go out first and you want to. Yeah, yeah. It which, is. Okay, different. we're going to go through the go entire first. We're going to go through the entire first date. We'll get to yeah. that. Um, but house, bad idea. Amusement park, bad idea. Um, drive in, first date, bad idea. You're sitting in a car with a stranger for seven hours to nine hours, really bad. Um, why can't I think of anything that doesn't involve? Well, right. I will say, actually, a drive-in might be nice. No, Is it's classy and time? timeless, but it's better with friends. If you're gonna do it, do a double date or grab other friends that he wouldn't mind or she wouldn't mind or they wouldn't mind coming uh, or having friends come along. It's not a good first idea date to get idea together to be together that long because you don't know how long it's gonna it's be. Loose, and here's okay. Well, I think we're gonna have to agree to disagree on that. We because can, I'm- but here's here's where well here's what I'm about to say. Okay. Time. Choose a first date where you can leave. And, and that's like, that's good. That's actually Matthew, that's actually a really good there has been um, really good a couple of movies, a couple of TV shows. Plethora so like, if you're of- worried about leaving, you shouldn't go on a dinner date. Never yeah, but, but there, you, but there are a plethora of books, for example, that call it the first drink rule. Go get drinks, and it can be in drinks a place, and coffee. Drinks and coffee, but like if you want to do a formal dinner, go get a drink first while you're looking over the menu. Yeah. Have conversation, do whatever you need to do to decide whether it's worth staying and paying more money with that person because you never know who's gonna pay, um, which we're gonna get into. Um, but choose a date you can get out of if you need to. Um, that's why we do encourage some conversation prior so you can kind of gauge, but also it's not really going to tell you that much because people on text are 
very different than people in person. Especially, it's nice to bring them also to a place where they can interact with other people. Um, that's been said a million times too, where they can go around waiters and waitresses and you see how they are to customer service people because those people are working their ass off. And if they're rude to a customer service person, yeah. you don't want to get in bed with them. And that tells you a lot how they interact with other people. Yeah. It tells you a lot of information. And so I think it is important to meet in public or whatever, because yeah. you get to see them interact with other people. And if you don't, if you're hesitant on the way they react to other people, or if you feel uncomfortable, or if it makes, if you don't like the way they react to somebody, like right there, that's a red flag. Yeah. Um, okay. This one's just, cause I want to, I want to talk about it. Um, depending on what you choose is how you gauge what you wear. However, I have a rule that I love to be fancy any time of any day. I love it. It's that was, my, that was me in high school too. Do you it's remember? It's my that? everything. However, if you are like me and want to dress up fancy, here's your option. If you want to dress lazy, that's not an option. Here's what you have to Don't do. Don't do that. For Don't a first date, for a first date, pick somewhere right in the middle. Yes. Don't give them your best. Don't do exactly. that. Don't give yes. them your Don't best. And you can't give them their worst yet. You know, yeah, don't don't show up in pajamas or like slacks. No, or... the first night that they show up into your bed in the morning and they say you see you in the morning, they'll figure out what your worst is and if they want to stay or not. Okay, but <laughs> that's true. For now, choose your middle. Go with jeans and a t-shirt. Um, Do it, yeah. Go in, um, go in a two-piece suit instead of a four-piece suit. Um, go in, um. What's it like a casual, like a, um, a crop top and jeans. No. What is, what are those, what do women wear those, um, rompers, maxis, maxi dresses, yeah. maxi dresses are perfect. Um, yeah. Same or a with, romper. Romper's a romper crazy. is so cute. Um, yeah. don't come in your V-neck red dress and your red heels. Don't go in your tuxedo. Unless you're in New York City. And I'll, I'll tell you why in a second. Unless, okay, but like if you're going to a charity gala, if you're going to a fancy bougie ass party with high class society. And that's why there's, that's why that's an exception in New York City. That's because an exception. But when I'm a guy happy. asks you on a first date, sometimes they'll take you to an event and the yeah. event you have to dress up yeah. for because otherwise um, you're out of Please. Girl, even if someone's inviting you to something that casually is something fancy, wear something fancy. Like I said, there are exceptions to the rule, but for most things you're going to do, dress somewhere in yeah. the middle. For most things, dress up casual, unless they say an event, it's a nice event and you yeah. ask what to wear, dress in between casual and fancy. If you're going to a, a, an event, a, like not a high class event, like a medium event, like Broadway or something, Please wear something nice and formal. I know yeah. that rule has kind of gone out the window for some people. Wear something nice. Um, the one thing I also, the one thing I do have to add to is, like for me, when I go out on a first date, I do simple makeup, and I know that there's agree. A lot of that way, people can see kind of the yeah. in between. It's not too much. It's not a lot. Girls, exactly. if you and you do get it, to pop. You get to pop those facial features or like really um, show off those facial features that you really want to show off. And do, and, and women, I'm not telling you what to do, but do what makes you feel comfortable. Yeah. Um, but one of those days, this isn't Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. You don't get to go to bed, wake up at 5 a.m. for the rest of your life while he's in bed till 6 a.m. Get up, go do your full face of makeup, and get back in bed like and act like that's how you woke up. That's too much work. And I think... Like, I, I understand, like, it is different for women with acne and stuff, and that that, that can be, like, very... This includes like, men who like to do acne, makeup. You no, know? it may feel uncomfortable and stuff. Right. Um, and I'm not saying don't put foundation on. Yeah. Uh, if you feel comfortable with foundation on, like, do it. And if um, you feel more natural not putting on makeup, do that, too. You yeah, know, like, you don't have to put makeup on. Do but I think it is yeah. important to not, like, coat your makeup on too much. Yeah. Because the the one issue is like a guy, like guys are weird. 
but like they'll, so they'll be if like, you do you it makeup on and then you take the makeup off and they're like oh like, that's the thing if you do a full face on, on you know like yeah it's it's a whole contradiction so it, yeah. i think when you go on that first date or on any date like what i do i mean i have really nice skin so it is different but i put only eyebrows and um mascara on and that's mm-hmm. it and if you um, do it a full different for girls who have acne and stuff like that right. so that that is different so however if you do a full face of makeup again that's up to you that's what makes you comfortable just know once again if that person that you are going out with mind you this is happened like it, it, it it's it goes with guys that also like to do makeup as well as well as the days that like to do makeup same thing we're talking about all of you if that person you were going on a date with guy girl they if, if you go out with them they're eventually going to see that if that's yeah. the goal because you know, again, communication, we are talking about first dates that lead to second dates and more dates after. We're not talking about first dates that lead to sex. Um, but in, in terms of first dates that lead to other dates, you are going to eventually have to show it. I'm, you, there is some sort of situation down the line where it's gonna happen. Um, you can't avoid the cold and the rain and the snow and, and whatever yeah. that takes your makeup out, that um, takes it completely off, that might, uh, you know, you know, you might go watch a fucking sad movie like Marley and me and cry in the movie theater and your mascara is running and you have to take it off um, or, or whatnot. There are gonna be situations where well, it's I will happen. say there's waterproof mascara. Correct, I don't correct, go to correct, it, correct. But like, but, but like I'm, I'm just saying mascara. like, they're going to eventually see it. So choose wisely what you um, decide to do on outfits. But like we said, choose somewhere in the middle, unless it's got the exception, including, because we all know beauty is pain. If you were just going to, because Irina lives in New York. If you decide that you're going to go on a date to Central Park, wear the in-between. Don't go yeah. fancy. Do not wear heels. But, do not do, wear heels. but also, do not wear your athletic wear. To yeah, the park. don't do that. You're you not going to look good. You want to look good, but not grand. You don't want to look like you just came out of bed. <laughs> just somewhere in the middle is perfect. Yeah. Um. So okay, so we're on the date. Um. Let's just say they took us out. We're on a date. And we're at dinner. Um, what do you uh, think about that? Um, Eating wise. General. So just date wise, we're on the or date. Conversation. What are we? What are we doing? What are we thinking? Where are we going? Um, one conversation. Yeah. What are they interested in about you? What are they talking about? My big one. Um, make sure that the question portion is happening on both sides. If yes. one of you so strictly important. is only asking the questions, walk out, leave. You know it's done. You know that if you were the only one asking questions, he, she, they doesn't give a fuck. Walk out, try again. Yeah. Um, and that's what happens, you know, even even the, the time where you decide what you want to drink to the time you get a drink, that's the perfect time to just start asking questions and if they don't return the favor, you know, and by the way, make sure they're also asking new questions. If they want to ask you, like if, if I ask you, Rena, like what's your favorite color? Purple. Okay. And she says back, what's your favorite color? I'm going to answer blue. That the next question comes from her. You know, it, it, make sure that they're also giving you other questions. There's a balance and it's, because another thing to consider is if it's always and this is what where it gets a little tricky and a, a bit annoying too is like if if someone's always like giving an answer and then what about you or like what about yes. you like how are you feeling about that or blah 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 if it's the bounce back like that's not fair like yeah of course the conversation like, doesn't flow and like and, and the fun part about it is it is sometimes like even if you don't like, oh uh, Irina ask me um ask me my favorite color what's your favorite color blue what's your favorite animal wolf okay now you bounce questions she knows my favorite color i know her favorite animal it would be my job to ask but we don't know the vice versa that can be perfect conversation to be like oh i don't remember asking that on the second date or later in the first date you can be like okay let's circle back and answer each other's questions 
um, you know, that can be super exciting. That can be super fun. Because that's the interesting thing is you're not going to always remember what the other person said on the first date. You're not going to necessarily remember yeah. on the second date either. So we encourage, back we, around hear, ask, we, we ask questions. That shows that you're really like considering the, like you're really thinking about the person and re, like it shows you're eager to actually know information. About yes. Them. Girls, gays, and nays, a part of the Deeper Conversations fam. We support multi-dating, at least for the first date. Yeah. Go on a couple of first dates with a couple of different it's people. It's okay. It's okay. unless you don't unless let anybody tell you otherwise yeah unless yes. you have ha unless you have had the conversation of being exclusive you don't have to be dating only one person yes correct and and, and more likely than not um i'm just gonna put this actually you know what i'm just gonna say it in general the other person at the other end of the table is probably already doing the same so don't they set yourself, are, don't do your set set yourself back they're high they're fast paced in New York City. Guys yes. are always dating other girls. Yes. So if you are a girl dating in New York City, you best be dating other guys. Yeah. You, you cannot be like not dating other guys yeah. because you will get in a lot of trouble. Okay, not so emotional. You are, you'll get in a lot of trouble for dating one guy. We are at dinner. Questions, very important, balance of power. Make sure you guys are doing it back and forth. Second thing, again, we talked about this. We won't go into more detail. Make sure they're being kind to the 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 um, all up to the parts of the server, not just the server, but the host. Um, maybe there's a sommelier, um, but also the server, and maybe if the chef comes out, or even just really other customers, dinner. like yes. other customers, like if they bump into someone and they're like, "Oh, excuse me, I'm so sorry, like I didn't mean," you know, like it's it's important to like read the full language. Yes. Um, whether there's and and this might be important to you it might not be who knows um which we're gonna get into in a second too i'm so excited for this part but um whether or not they are a gentle man woman they um do they hold the door is is it so, is it important to you that they hold the door open for you is it important that they walk around the table first pull your chair out you sit and they pull it in are those things important to you those things are um very uh oh what is the chivalrous um and if that's something you're looking for that is something you want and if that's yeah. something they're not doing you can walk out we are letting you walk out of dates in 2021 if oh, it does not happen the first five to ten five to fifteen minutes walk out um it is okay just be like hey and be honest with them please don't just walk out <laughs> Be like, hey, and can, I, can I actually add something with this? Please. Because it is interesting because along with feminism, a lot of people have been arguing the fact that men shouldn't have to do that. Like it's, and, and I'm not saying that men have to do that, but uh, something to consider is women get paid less in their jobs. They, they give birth. And might I add when they give birth, not only do they get potentially get gray hair, do they have a um, uterus that isn't as functional anymore? Or, or it's like they're even like like peeing and pooping could completely change their lives after right. giving birth. So like, and, and then they can have like, like they could have issues in other areas within like that similar area. Like I don't want to discuss it because I think it's a little bit PDA and I feel like a lot of people might be a little uncomfortable um hearing about this kind of thing but like women go through a lot and i and, and uh, with feminism with the discussion of feminism it's been really tricky because a lot of people are like well where are the boundaries for that and it, it it doesn't mean that a man shouldn't hold the door for you it doesn't mean that a man shouldn't pull a chair out for you it doesn't mean that a man shouldn't pick you up for dinner and it doesn't mean that a man shouldn't pay for your dinner it, like it, it is important to be feminist like if you, if you are a feminist that's like that's good like it's important to be a feminist but that but doing all those things doesn't make you less of a feminist yeah um it just shows that a man is respecting you enough to do all those things for you and i ha I, I do want to backbone this though i know you know obviously a lot of strong women out there and whatnot that they want to do their own things if that's you fucking do it and if that's you, totally if fine you that's wanna, totally hell fine. if you want to pick up the whole tab we won't expect it, yeah. um, but I think, you know, I'm gay, but but if there's a man out there who uh, like pulls it out and he wa pulls it out, pulls out um, his like wallet, 
Um, if and she's like, I want to pay the bill. Let her fucking pay the bill. Let her do it. Yeah. Um, I think obviously asking twice, you know, no, I insist. And she's like, no, I really want to pay the bill. Let her pay the bill. Um, you know, but what also it's, it's okay to like be like, I really want to be the one that pays the bill. Yes. Like, um, it, which it, is that it brings and, and, oh, go ahead. like if, if a woman really wants to pay the bill, that is totally fine. Like, I'm not saying don't, don't, don't like, I'm not saying let a guy absolutely pay yeah. the bill. For you. Like, you know, if you like, if they're like really like I should pay the bill, I'm the manly. Like don't yeah. you don't have to do that. Yeah. But the, the point is like I'm just saying that like it doesn't make you any less feminist right. to to allow that to happen because to be honest like women do get treated differently than yeah. men and we do work harder to get to the position that right. we're in. And I mean I, I don't say that for every woman and for every man. Like no. it, it's not the same for every person. Right. But for the majority and for the society yeah. that we live in, it is often the case. Well, so then here, this brings me my, to my next point about the communication that Irina and I talked about in the other podcast does not stop. The first date has a shit ton of communication as well. It is important to know there is not a man and a woman in a, fee, in a, in a, in a gay relationship. In terms of the bill, you got to yes. talk about it. We never know. We're so fucking awkward about it. Like you're at dinner and you're like, who's going to pay the bill? <laughs> right. Who's going to pay the bill? Um, I know personally, I love paying the bill, but I also love when they pay the bill. Um, I'm not made of money. I'm sure the other person's not made of money. Well, you never know. You never know, but be respectful. Talk it out. Um, I like paying the bill. If I pay the bill, I'm going to pay the bill. Um, and you're just going to see me pull out my wallet. Um, which is a great indication, sort of, where you still have to ask because it's just awkward. But if you want to split the bill in a gay relationship, that is something you discuss. Just be like, hey, I think we should just split the bill. I'm going to tell you right fucking now, if you go through the entire date and the whole one drink thing didn't work out and you were feeling it and then now you're not feeling it, please, please do not let somebody equally or not equally pay the bill in a gay relationship. I think a man should probably mostly <laughs> always pay for the women's dinner. Um, obviously, there there will always be certain circumstances for different situations that it, it does not work out that way. But in a gay relationship, if you guys are not vibing, pay for each side of the bill. Do not split it in the middle. One of you shouldn't be paying. Like, girl, I, that's just that's just me. But I ain't paying for your meal if I ain't going to expect a second date. I'm sorry about that. Um, escape routes so if if that first drink does or doesn't even work out if you want to listen i'm all okay for this shit if you want to tell them hey i'm leaving i this doesn't work out we're not vibing well walk out or escape route you can <laughs> always have a backup plan um oh there we go oh, there you go it's okay it's okay we're back um it's okay to have an escape route if I'm going on a date, and also, it's not even just an escape route. We should have prefaced this before. Man, woman, gay, straight, they, them, non-binary, whoever you are, it's dangerous for anybody out there. Maybe it's less dangerous for a straight, cis, het, white man. Sure. Absolutely. A thousand percent. Um, but there are people who are out for straight, cis, het, white men too. So if whoever you are, whatever you look like, please be making sure that somebody knows where you are, um, at least where you are first. You're muted. You're muted, girl. You're muted. Um, you're, you're muted. muted. Irina, you're <laughs> muted. We can't hear you. <laughs> Miss Mama. <laughs> um, hold on, I got it. There we go. There you go. I got it. Okay. Um, okay. But so, but, but I no. always send my location. Always send my location to my roommates or to my friends. Yes. Yeah. Um, but 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 to go back, if you don't feel the vibe, literally be like, hey, text me twenty minutes into the date. If it's going well, I won't respond. If it's not, I'm gonna text like SOS and then call me and then get me the fuck out of here. You know. What and I mean? that's like, okay. Like yeah. that's that's not rude or disrespectful. Nope. That's okay to do. Like if things are not going well, if things are vibing, or if you feel threatened or yes. in danger, 
it is okay to have a friend step in and call you. And if they feel hurt by that, again, with the communication, they can suck it up. It's not they your can problem. Suck it up it is because not it, it's not, problem. you're doing, you're doing a polite thing where you're not like telling them that the date was awful and ridiculous or you feel uncomfortable or whatever. You're, you're a set, like you're finding a scapegoat to allow yourself to leave the date. And then later on is when you're more honest, because especially if you feel in danger, like you shouldn't have to stay within that date. Okay. Uh, we're going to play a fun little game that I have for you. Both of you guys. Sounds good. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're just going to call this game. Um, say yes to the quest or no. Um, and I, yes, I just abbreviated question. I'm going to, I'm going to ask you guys a series of questions and all you have to tell me is yes or no. This is a first date. Here we go. Love this. Okay. Why did your last relationship end? No. <laughs> Wait, sorry. This is, we're saying yes or no. I'm on a first date with both of you. Well, not at the same time, but I'm on a first date with both of you guys. I'm <laughs> asking you this question. You're telling me if it's appropriate or not to ask on a first date. Oh, no. <clears throat> okay. Um, this, why are you still single? No. No, oh, I hate that question. By the way, don't, first don't date or not, ask that question. first date or not, you should never say this to someone. It is not a compliment. Never will be yeah, a compliment. Yeah, it's like, oh, why are you still single? Uh, why are you still single? Yeah, like what? Okay. Um, where are you really from? No. Okay. So for me, I have a reason behind this. And I Wait, say yes no because no. Oh, no, okay. I say no because I have constantly been asked by people, not just on Tinder, not just on Bumble. They're like, where are you actually from? They're like, you don't look American. And I'm like, I get to ask that so many times. And like, I, I mean, like, sure. Like I, I say I'm Russian, but one time I had a guy, like, he's like, oh, where are you from? Like, you don't seem American. And I'm like, well, I'm from Russia. He's like, oh, do you still speak Russian? And I'm like, no, like I lived in Russia for four years and then I came to America and he's like, oh, so you're not really Russian. Yeah, I was like, excuse sure. me? Um, I was like, yes, I am really Russian. I was sure. born there. I lived there for four years. I'm sorry if I still don't know the language, but that's insulting to a person. Like, to insulting to a person. However, I do have to say, if you may or may not think that they're from somewhere else, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, Obviously, that question specifically is very disrespectful. However, is. however, there is because a way. Because it insults to... the person that you. It's like it's like like assuming that they're not from this country can yes. be really insulting well, to. Well, right, person. but there is a way to ask. If if you are very curious, it's appropriate, I believe, to ask. Hey, what's your ethnic background what is your yeah, ethnicity that is the appropriate different. way to say it where it's like the, where the way you that really you first from. said it was like racist it, it's racist like, it can really it from? can be racist but if anything it's passive aggressive and you don't want to come off as passive yeah. aggressive. okay uh how many I, I'm going to say yes to this question just because I think it's fun. It does not matter. And also, it has to be a very specific person that you say this to. Yeah. And and honestly, there's a very slim amount of people that you do it with. And honestly, you both are going to say no. But I think it's funny. Like, between gay people, I think it can just be kind of funny because we all kind of know <laughs> the different sexual things. But um, how many people have you slept with? Actually, I don't have a problem with that. I think, again, it could hurt a person, whatever. <laughs> um, how much money do you make? That is not a question you should it ask. It is not an appropriate question at any time. If you, listen, I, I'm going to tell you point blank, period. If somebody shows up, you're going to know whether you're getting a sugar daddy. That's or almost like a gold digger sort of question. Yeah. Um, where do you see this relationship heading? On the no. first date, no. On the first date, no. Okay. no. There's a certain time for that conversation. That's down yeah. the line. It's not a first date question. And it's not even a second date question. Like, no. literally, you have to have had, like, that, a, is, that conversation comes after, a, like, the 10th date, and you're like, okay, maybe yeah. we talk about. Maybe you've been dating yeah. for, like, six months. Yeah, or something. Um, like, that's not, 
Not the first few dates. What was your most embarrassing moment? I don't find that question offensive. I think it's it could lead to funny conversation. Yeah, I think that's fine. Um, and then the last question I'm going to ask, um, which I'm going to add on one, but is do you want kids? No. Not on the first date. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to, hold on. So I'm going to talk about this for two seconds because I think it's important. Um, I think... I think religion over kids for sure is a question that you should be allowed to ask. Um, and I don't mean out of mockery, but I mean, if your religion is that important to you and you want to ask that said person what uh, religion they are, and that can even happen before the first date just to be like, hey, and if you don't you know, match, then don't. Uh, but if it's not a question you've asked and you wanna ask that, be respectful of how you ask it and the tone of how you say it. But I think it's very respectful to ask, hey, what is your religion? Because if you don't, then then it's not um, it's not a, it's not gonna work out for either of you. And you don't yeah. want to waste their time and you don't want to waste your own time. Um, again, bring it up at an appropriate time, bring it up in an appropriate yeah. way. But I think it's important. The do you want kids thing, I think that can wait, but it is sort of in the same realm. Well, of here's, here's why I say don't bring it up. Because if a guy on the first date asked me if I wanted kids, I would automatically say no. But you're also pres kind of presuming, it's kind of a presumptuous question to what's gonna happen after the first date, I think. Um, of like, do you want it kids? It is, but, but here's the thing too, like if a, if, if somebody ends up really liking somebody, that question can change. But if, if on the first date, when you barely know the person and they ask that sort of question, it's, it's yeah. like, I don't know you. Like, no, I don't want to have kids with you. True, but if you know what you want and you're not willing to compromise, I can see how it could be a very important question to you. And if, if that's really that important to you, then ask And that's away. true. That's true, yeah. but it's, it, it is also, again, that can be a fifth date. You do not. Sure. Need to but it also depends on, a, that depends on your age. You know, if you're 35 and you're ready to go and you really don't want to wait anymore. If you're 21 years age. old, you should not be talking about getting, I mean. You can if you want to, but maybe can, again, on the, but, third, on the third or fifth date, like wait a little bit. Yeah, wait. Like you don't um, need to, yeah. Yeah, I saw this I on <laughs> Instagram and I just want to talk about it for a second. I saw this, um, post and people were very upset about this question. So I want to bring it up. Uh, it's a question I would have never thought of, but it is a very disrespectful question. So I'm just going to go, go in for it. Someone said, what are some good first date questions? And someone responded, is there someone in your life who might be hurt by the fact that you're out on a date right now? That is not an appropriate question to ask then. That is not an appropriate question to ask on your first date fifth date that is not to be discussed ever at all yeah um, i feel like that person shouldn't be brought on the like correct the fact if bringing you their, their name into that date it shouldn't be they shouldn't you shouldn't even be thinking about them you shouldn't be thinking about anybody else except for your date um exactly. that person does not matter if that person is yeah. a is a bitch about it's you it. being on a date, you shouldn't be friends. You with should them. drop them. You um, should drop you should them. Act, yep, absolutely. And it might be because, um, let's just say, because a lot of classic TV shows, they're on a date with somebody, but they previously dated somebody else, and they are now friends. The ex and them are friends, but that person doesn't want them going out on other dates. That person should not matter. You're going on the date. You are happy about the date. You're focusing on the date. Faith, you wanted to say something. Yeah, I feel like that person is going into the date assuming that whoever's sitting across from them is maybe cheating on somebody at home. Like, I feel like that's insinuating that they think you're cheating on somebody and don't don't ever assume. That's just a terrible way to start a date. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Okay, this has been part one. I will see you guys in part two next week. Trust me, more shenanigans to come. I love you all. See you next week.